answering your most frequently asked tax audit questions. How long should I keep my tax return? At least three years, but six years is preferable. The IRS has at least three years after you file a tax return to complete an audit. For example, if you filed on April 15, 2021, for 2020, keep those records until at least April 16, 2024. The IRS can audit you for up to six years if it suspects that you underreported your taxable income by 25% or more. If the IRS suspects fraud, there is no time limit for an audit, although audits beyond six years are extremely rare. Keep records of purchases of real estate, stocks, and other investments for at least three years after the tax return reporting their sale was filed. How long should I worry if I haven't filed tax returns that I should have filed? At least six years. The government has six years from the date the non-filed return was due to criminally charge you with failing to file. There is no time limit, however, for assessing civil penalties for not filing. If you didn't file for, let's say, 1998, you still have an obligation if you owe taxes for that year. Not until you actually file a return does the normal audit time limit, three years, and collection time limit, 10 years start to run. Don't overworry about a non filed return due more than six years ago if you haven't heard from the IRS. The IRS usually doesn't go after non filers after six years unless the IRS began its investigation before the six years elapsed. After six years, the IRS transfers its computer file to tape for storage. If I can't pay my taxes, should I file my return anyway? Yes, filing saves you from the possibility of being criminally charged or, more likely, from being hit with a fine for failing to file or for filing late. Interest continues to build up until you pay. Of course, filing without paying will bring an IRS collector into your life, but the sooner you start filing, the better. Who has access to my IRS file? Federal law makes IRS files private, not public records. The law has many exceptions, however. IRS files can be legally shared with other federal and state agencies. Furthermore, IRS employees have been caught snooping and computer hackers have broken into government databases. While a violation of the Privacy Act is a crime, rarely is anyone prosecuted for it, though IRS personnel can be fired if caught. What should I do if I don't get my refund? If you filed your tax return electronically and it's been over 21 days, six weeks if you file by mail, check on your refund status using the IRS online Where's my refund tool at www.irs.gov forward slash refunds or call the IRS Automated Tax Refund Hotline at 800-829-1954 or call the 24-hour assistance number at 800-829-1040 and request assistance from the taxpayer advocate. If you filed your return on or before April 15th and don't receive your refund until after May 31st, the IRS must pay you interest. If you never get a refund, it may have been intercepted to pay other state or federal taxes you owe, a defaulted student, SBA or other federal government loan, or delinquent child support. In these situations, you're supposed to be notified in writing, but don't count on it. I recently got married. Am I responsible for my spouse's past taxes? Maybe your wages and property might be at risk of IRS seizure for your spouse's tax bill, depending on the laws of the state where you live. In most states, property owned by one spouse before marriage remains that spouse's separate property during marriage. Assets acquired during marriage, however, are generally considered joint property, 
when couples own property together, IRS problems can arise. The IRS can legally go after jointly owned assets to cover the tax debt of just one spouse. Be particularly aware of these specific problem areas. Gifts. If a spouse without an IRS tax debt gives a spouse who has a tax debt an interest in property, the IRS can grab it, although the IRS would have to pay the wife for her half interest once the property was sold. Commingled property. If spouses deposit funds into a joint account, and use that account to pay joint expenses, the funds are commingled. The IRS can take the entire account to satisfy the tax debt of one spouse. However, if the couple uses commingled funds to purchase property and the IRS seizes it for only one spouse's tax debt, the IRS must give the non-debtor spouse half of the sales proceeds. Wages. The IRS quite unfairly, can take the wages of one spouse to pay for the sole tax debt of the other spouse. Some couples have divorced just to stop the IRS from taking the wife's wages for taxes owed by the husband prior to marriage. They may continue to live together after the divorce, but the wife's earnings are no longer within the IRS's grasp. Should I notify the IRS when I move? Report your new address on IRS Form 8822. A post office change of address form may not work. Notifying the IRS ensures that you will get audit letters and other vital notices which often have strict time limits for replies. Can I recover my accountant's and lawyer's fees for fighting the IRS? It's possible, but unlikely. Legally, if you win, you may get reimbursed for your costs, but the IRS seldom pays attorney's fees, and when it does, it's at a rate lower than what most tax lawyers charge. The judge makes the final determination of the reasonableness of the entire bill, and to win, you must substantially prevail in court the IRS must have taken an unreasonable position and you must have exhausted all procedural remedies within the IRS before going to court.